why this is usually the case is because when you think of this high dimensional data, there, there really, there's only some, usually some low, to, low number of parameters which describe, which generate this data. You can, you can get, so if you, we think about these pictures again, right? I could think of this picture as this enormous vector with this, these, oh, with this, this, uh, these, um, these millions and billions of, of, of dimensions. Uh, but it's not lying in a full space, it's lying in a subspace here. And the reason is, if you have a picture of a face, now there, and if you took it with the exact same camera, right, and the same lighting condition, and I just turn my face left or right, then there's only one parameter describing the pictures of my face, uh, how much left or right I turned it. And so there's a really complex set of pixels but there's this one parameter which describes it. So it's usually not something like a straight line. It's usually like, you know, there's some curved subspace here. But if you look at it, but what happens is once you start doing this, you break it down locally a few times. You know, I, I do this, I break it down again. And in each of these, you know, sections, it looks like it's basically straight. So each of the, after you divide it a few times, it looks pretty straight. Um, so it's, if, you, if you've heard this thing called manifold learning, right, it's trying to learn these manifolds. And the, and the idea of a manifold is that at a small enough scale, it looks like it's flat. So if you divide it a few times, it's going to look flat, and then this looks kind of like a, a lower dimensional space. And so then these, some of these issues don't, don't occur anymore, because I'm no longer worrying about all the corners, I'm just worrying about some of the corners. And I'm able to get up to maybe 20, 20 dimensions here. OK, but these SIF features I talked about were in 128 dimensions. So what do I do in this case? I want to use these data structures. They work really well in maybe up to 20 dimensions. Um, they, they don't, by themselves, they don't work that well in SIF vectors up to when they're 128 dimensions, even though there's some maybe lower dimensional structure they live in, it still doesn't quite work. There's a couple other tricks you can use. The problem with the volume problem of the cube versus the sphere is that you're trying to fit, you're, you fixed the coordinates ahead of time. Um, in some cases, the coordinates are, are useful for doing things, but in really high dimensions, they kind of are they're hiding this kind of inherent structure which sees how things change in some way. And so what you want to do is, on, when you're doing this KD tree, you're alternating the split, but you want to somehow guide this so that you are not just picking the X or the Y direction, you want to pick some direction which splits the data. If I'm right here, um, if, if I'm at this data, at this cell, I don't want to split the X or the Y direction, I'm going to split it into three pieces. I want to split it into two pieces. So I somehow want to figure out what is the direction that I should split here. And so there are a couple of tricks how to do this. And th these are all papers in the last five years where people have figured out how to, how to do these. There, there, there are a couple of ways how to, how to choose um, the split, um, 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 choose a, um, choose a split direction adaptively. Um, so th there's, um, there's one technique that came out where you um, pick about 10 um, random directions and then use the one that uh, works the best. And so we'll, we'll talk about why do these random directions, even in like a thousand dimensional space, why would, this, why would some random directions work? We'll talk about a technique called the johnson linnitz uh technique for kind of dealing with really high dimensional data um, later in the semester. And that'll help explain why this might work. There's, there's another technique where you do, you, um, do a two means uh, um, clustering. So you, find, you may have heard of k-means clustering, right? But you just do two means. And you find two, two points, and you use this to split. They'll probably be pretty far apart. 
you can even actually use the clusters here and actually split on the clusters without actually um, drawing a line there. You can even do that. It'll actually, like the Borne diagram, it'll define one line between the two clusters, even in high dimensions. So you can do the two means clustering. And this seemed to have worked a little bit better than here if you avoid some of the randomness, which adds some extra factors. Um, there's another technique that I haven't seen in a paper, but I kind of um, think will work pretty similarly, is that you'll pick, just pick, um, pick two, um, or I think it'll work better, better than this technique. So pick two points at random, um, and then you draw a line um, between these two points and use this to split. So, so here I would pick this point and maybe this point. I draw a line between them and then I split on the median, of, the median point along this line is my split line. So just picking two points at random, if you have enough data, this will probably give you a pretty good split. Um, so, uh, so, so we'll talk about k-means and actually alternatives to k-means clustering, which will probably work even faster in high dimension if they give you something just as good uh, starting, starting next week. Um, so, um, so that's basically all I have to say about this. I know it was a little bit it was a little fast, it was a little much, I talked about a lot of things. So this is kind of, I want to give you a taste of some of the uh, kind of advanced techniques which are still, still evolving um, um, and stuff today. You actually won't need um, any of this on, on the homework assignment. So if this kind of went fast, you didn't get all the details, that's okay. But these, these ideas of the, of the Katie tree, it's really easy to implement. And even these adaptations are not hard to add on to in high dimensions. And, and they'll actually work, work really well for these applications. There's also these libraries like the ANN library, although it doesn't implement these, but it's very stable and pretty easy to use, which you can use for these applications. Um, there's public source code for, for these. If you look up David um, Lowe, um, so he's the same guy who invented the, the SIP features. He came up with this algorithm to split based on the cluster centers and has a big experimental suite and some, uh, and some code online that you can probably use for this. So, um, yeah, so, um, okay, great. So if you haven't gotten your homework or your projects back, you can come and see me.